I'm not sure if this is an interview for the Gilded Age or is this a convention for <laughs> actresses who've won Tonys for playing Anna in The King and I? <laughs> I think you're, I think you're, um, you're, you're, what's, I just lost the expression. It's quite simple. You're killing two birds with one stone, which is just a horrible, horrible expression. And that's why I didn't want to say it, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But you can take your pick. Whatever brings you to the Gilded Age, you know, please. Yeah, exactly. But this is what I thought about when I watched the show, because both of you have won Tonys, you both for the same role. How often is that that we see each other in the same room together? I mean, we're not in the same room right now, but, right. you know, so to speak. It's funny. I don't think we ever talked about that. No. But we can talk about, you know, um, the time in corsets and hoop skirts uh, earlier in the 19th century that we both spent. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, I've, I've been, you know, I've been Donna's fan forever and ever and ever, but I, we certainly did talk, uh, the wonderful thing about being on the set with somebody like Donna is just the beautiful conversation. We talked a lot about the industry. Um, there were some crazy times happening in this last year and we talked a lot about a lot of things, um, but I do, I, I do love sharing the fact that um, sharing this role together uh, from the King and I, I, Donna came to see us um, and that was just a big night for us. We were all just as nervous as I'll get out. And, um, and so oh. it, it is, it's, it's a little surreal to be, um, to be working in this way and have this shared history. And it's, it's been a wonderful gift. Especially at the time when there was such a sense of isolation and even though people were being very creative about the ways they could connect with one another, um, then to actually be physically in the presence of your colleagues, your, your mentors, your um, former castmates, but you just, these are your, your kinfolk in in the industry that we all work in and and such an amazing group of people and some of us knew each other well some of us have just been you know we've all been around the block um or on the, i've been around the block and some have, have been on the block together um, <laughs> and it was just uh i don't know I, you know obviously some of us knew we were going to do the show and we're scheduled to start it before the pandemic hit and we were all so excited at that point and then no one knew exactly what was going to happen. So when we actually got to do it and under very particular circumstances and very particular protocols, and so we couldn't hang out the way, you know, you would um, or you might if it were not a pandemic circumstance, circumstance, but still being able to look into Kelly's eyes, you know, with our masks covering our faces until they said action, um, but to look into your eyes, in a way, I think that there were conversations that happened that just needed to happen. And that maybe that, you know, that the nature or the, the depth of some of those conversations or the, the tone of some of those conversations wouldn't have happened as quickly um, at another time because we, we just all really needed to talk about what was going on. And there was a lot going on in addition to the gift of the work we were doing, as Kelly you know, inferred earlier, there was a lot going on in our country. There was a lot going on in our business mm -hmm. that was all being questioned and rightfully so. And some of us had very personal experiences with elements of it. And we were also concerned about our peers. And uh, so it, it was really quite amazing. And we, as you said, Lee, we had this particular thing that we shared and I, you know, I had the incredible pleasure of getting to see the production that Kelly did several times because I, I saw it initially, I think when you were doing it with Ken, I saw, and I didn't get to see you afterwards. And then I saw it when you did it with Jose Lana, who was an old friend who was in my production and was, uh, you know, the young male ingenue in that production. And then, um, and then I did see it with Marin, um, kind of her opening, our beloved Marin after passed. So, and that 
So that the three of us share that. And then one of my other very, very best friends is Mary Beth Peel, who had done the production of King and I, the last production that Yul Brynner did um, on Broadway. And so I just, I have all these Mrs. Anna's in my life and it's such a great role. And there's such incredible strength and heart and courage and humanity in her. So, and I think you, if you're lucky, you, you're able to, to take some of these things that you try to imbue a character with um, and you hope that you take some of those qualities with you. And um, I know all these ladies that I just mentioned did and I hope I did too. Speaking of time, I'm not sure if you caught this, but you probably did, but the show takes place. It's sandwiched right in between time periods of when the King and I took place and when Hello Dolly were set. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly is, yeah. Dolly's right? pretty close. It was 1860, 1880, and 1890 or something like that when I Googled. So there must be something about the 1800s that calls to you. Definitely. We, we, you and I have both worn a lot of corsets, right, Kelly? Yes, indeed. <laughs> I was, that was my next question. You both, have, you know, these costumes, you, you probably stepped into them, you know, after a year of being in sweatpants and you were like, oh, I feel comfortable in this because I've worn these outfits before. Yeah, no, that was that was one of the most uh, coming home feelings I had. Oh, I know how to wear this corset. But then you learn quickly that um, doing it, putting a corset on for two and a half, three hours in the evening is one thing, but wearing it for 16 hours <laughs> one day and not being smart and having corset breaks or taking it off during a meal, I learned that the hard way um, up when we were shooting the finale, Donna, in Newport. And uh, the next day, I, I was certain I had bruised a rib or something, but it, uh, I got better the next day because I got smart after that. Yeah. So you're really wearing, underneath those beautiful costumes, you're really wearing all the undergarments. Oh, the full on. It's, it's fully authentic. It's, um, it's, it's extraordinary, actually, the attention to detail. I mean, the sets amazed me you know the elaborate places you got to go to shoot i mean and you did shoot in newport i saw a photo you posted um which i guess is later on in the season and and we yeah, that was like so far hey i would say a little bit of a last hurrah in or in newport that group photo that that selfie that you took outside yeah. that kelly it was a great sweet night that was rare i was not like we did that every night after no work. it was it was nice to all gather together um that that those times up in newport that back in march last march felt very theatrical it was there's i won't give anything away but there was a lot of you know there was choreography and things that felt like we were putting on putting on a show you know and then yeah. we were all in repertory theater somewhere having meals together, you know, um, out of town. That, that was really fun. And then every time I heard about someone who was cast, you know, I was just like, what? Are you, are you kidding me? And, you know, at some point somebody said, oh yeah, there's a character, it's Danae's mother. Yeah. I said, oh, do, well, did they cast Audra? And they said, well, yes, they did. And I said, well, of course they did. <laughs> you know, it was like, it was just, um, so it, I don't know. It, it's a very rarefied experience. And I think that it's not, it hasn't been lost on any of us, yeah. how great it is. And that we're surrounded by the best of the best in terms of the designing, the, the, the production design, who's actually, the production designer is a friend of mine from when I did the Mystery Bed when Drood in the Delacour Theater. Um, uh, oh my God, I just- Bob Shaw, Bob Shaw. Shaw, thank you. Uh, sure. I'm going to kill myself right after the interview. It happens to me all the time. Something about COVID, <laughs> the pandemic. <laughs> oh, I think everyone. Uh, yeah, right. So Bob Shaw is is just done this remarkable. I mean, seemingly, I, I don't, I, I can't understand how what was accomplished was accomplished. You know, the interiors of, for instance, mm. the Russell Mansion. That's mm. like this is an interior inside another building. It's unbelievable. And the attention to detail and our costume designer, Kasha, Kasha, is just off the charts. Donna, where is that portrait of you now? Where is that hanging? It's waiting that for season two, we hope. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone on Twitter went nuts for that yes. portrait of you last night. Yes. So it's funny because Mrs. Astor, historically, 
had a very famous portrait of her. It was actually done later. It was done in like 1890. Uh, but they very, she was known to greet her guests. She would stand in front of that portrait. We had to take some liberties with this, but, and I think it's because she probably looked nice, a little bit better in the portrait than she did in real life. So, but she would stand in front of that rather intimidating portrait and greet people. And they wanted to recreate that portrait. And then I actually brought up, mm, but that was so specifically done and it's noted as having happened in 1890. Are there some other portraits of her or portraits of people that were not specifically, you know, known as historical characters that would still, we could capture her essence and basically stick my head on it. <laughs> so they took, we did a photo shoot. There were three different paintings and we, pos I would position myself in, you know, pos positions, if you will, poses that would work on the top of these three beautiful paintings. And then that's what they came up with. But yeah, people got they got a kick out of that and no I you know I was asked like did I get to take it home I'm like no we all hope we'll revisit that house none of us know yet we don't know but we'll see you both performed you both performed for sometimes 90th what does that mean looking back at it now what did that moment mean to you oh Donna I'll I'll you go ahead please your 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 history with Sondheim is Fast. Well, I guess that was the last time I performed for him mm -hmm. and and doing perform interpreting his material. Um, I'm so glad I said yeah. I'm so glad I was asked. Mm -hmm. Glad I said yes. Um, I wasn't somebody who got it together to do a lot of concert making concertizing um, from my home uh, during that time, but I couldn't not say yes to that. And um, and that note, he wrote me a note afterwards and and we've been emailed. I, I mean, we would email each other. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've had, had, I had subsequent emails that followed that time, but it just felt Raul's passion to celebrate him you know, that year, um, I'm so grateful for it and, and grateful that Raul had just such drive and, um, well, passion uh, and determination to do it with the help of um, Broadway.com and Paul there. And he gathered great people and everybody did, you know, found their own way to do it. Because I was like, shit, I don't, I don't have the lighting. I don't have a, another person in this house. My daughter was my camera person. She was rolling her eyes during certain takes. You know? I think you wrote me about that. You were like, what is the lighting situation? What should I do? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We had, I had like every lamp in my living room just gathered on stacks of things. And, um, but most importantly, just the fact that we were, we, we were giving it to him. We were giving it to him. And in giving it to him, of course, other people got to enjoy it. But my experience with Steve, particularly in the last, I would say, well, during Passion too, but Passion, we were creating something. We we're in the midst of creating something. And there were, there was, you know, there were a lot of challenges in that. But still, during that time, he gave me the great gift of saying, in addition to the role itself, saying to me, he asked me after a show one night, as I was going upstairs, he said, um, hey, you having fun? And it was a day that was during previews at the, like a group, a small sanction of the audience had like applauded when I passed out at some point. They'd hissed when I'd come and followed Giorgio on the train. And, um, and I said, oh God, Steve, it's just all so meaningful. And I mean, I couldn't have asked for a greater gift as an actress, the challenges, the, 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 the everything is golden to me. And he said, no, 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 no. I just, I just wanted to know if you're having any fun. I said, uh, yeah, yeah. I, and he said, no, listen to me. It's not always like this. I, I know the connection you feel with this character and, and, and I feel it for the character with you. You've got to embrace the joy of it. It's such a waste if you don't allow yourself the joy of it. 
And I didn't feel like I was denying myself that. But coming from him, and he was very hard on himself and very demanding. If somebody else had just said, hey, Donna, lighten up and just have a good time playing a little old Fosca, I would think, well, you know, they, they, don't know what's, they don't know what it is. It's coming from Steve. And it really resonated so deeply for me. And I carried it with me and I have to remind myself periodically, but um, in subsequent productions that I did of his, he, he was often there waiting to tell people, thank you. When, I, when we did Into the Woods of the Park, he'd be waiting in the volumes uh, there at the uh, Delacourt Theater, just shaking people's hands giving them hugs, saying, oh, this particular moment was so great. He really appreciated and enjoyed seeing his work produced and seeing it interpreted in different ways by different people. Mm -hmm. And um, so as usual, I don't have a sound bite for you, Lee. <laughs> um, uh, but I, um, it was an honor, it was a privilege and I, you know, I miss him. I miss, mm. I miss thinking that he'll be in the room or on the other side of the screen, you know, or responding to a letter, not to mention creating more junior yeah. theater. Yeah. Sorry, I took so much time talking about that. No, no, I wanted to hear, I wanted to hear you. I, you know, my beginnings, my beginnings, uh, with, were with Steve, my first, one of my first Broadway shows was the Follies and, so I was, you know, so enamored. And you're right, he was so generous with his, you know, he would sit around the, the table read and cry, you know, at performances. And he was very generous that way. Um, but anyway, my favorite part of that 90th birthday celebration was we all gathered in that sort of Zoom room and took a picture with him. And he's right in the center of the, the Zoom box. And, you know, and everybody's saying, horribly over Zoom saying happy birthday to him and it all was meshing and canceling each other out. It was terrible. And he was basically like, that was awful. <laughs> um, but I loved it. And we took that picture and he was so obviously so moved and so kind. And, um, and you know, over the years, just, just knowing he was around, it's, it's easy to fool yourself during this pandemic that, well, this is, when this all ends, he'll be there somewhere. This is a strange time. It's hard to, to think about him being gone, but boy, does his legacy live on.